If you are self-employed in Germany, the likelihood is incredibly high that you will have to submit regular VAT returns. Everything you need to know about the topic as a self-employed individual can be found in this video. Basically, in Germany, you are liable for VAT if you are self-employed. There are a few exceptions. For example, if you opt for the small business regulation, you waive the requirement to show VAT and submit regular VAT returns. If you have never heard of this regulation, be sure to check it out in the top right corner. Here, I'll link you to a whole playlist on the topic of the small business regulation. If you're just starting out, this might be a relevant topic for you. However, there are other professions not required to submit VAT returns. Specifically, there are sales not subject to VAT. And these sales also exclude input tax deduction on the other side. Examples include doctors, insurance agents, midwives, and so on. There are a number of activities that are exempt from VAT. Whenever you work in one of these occupations, you also do not submit value-added tax returns. For all other self-employed individuals and businesses in Germany, there is an obligation to submit ongoing VAT returns. The frequency at which you have to submit this VAT return, in other words, how often you need to do it, depends on the total amount of VAT you paid in the previous calendar year. However, prior to exploring the frequency, let's initially examine what a VAT return truly is. What precisely occurs in that situation? As a self-employed individual, you continuously write invoices. These invoices include the price for your service, such as your service or products, plus VAT, which in Germany is usually 19 or 7% VAT. That means you're not just invoicing your customers the actual price, but also an amount for VAT, and you add up the VAT amounts from all your invoices. And from this total amount of VAT, you then deduct the VAT that you in turn pay to your suppliers, to your external service providers, etc. You have paid. You also receive invoices from other companies all the time, which you then pay. And on these invoices, there is also VAT stated, and you can deduct this VAT from the VAT you have received. By the way, the VAT that you pay to your suppliers and service providers, etc. What you have paid is called input tax. This means quite specifically, you add up all your VAT amounts, then you add up all the input tax amounts, and then you subtract the total input tax from the total VAT. If the total is a positive amount, that is the amount of VAT you have to pay to the tax office. Also, the amount can be negative. This means you have paid more VAT to service providers and suppliers than received from customers. Absolutely possible. In such cases, the tax office will transfer the input tax to your account. This naturally raises the question of how to do it all. Where do I calculate it? Most accounting programs have a function for this, like LexOffice, Sevdesk, and so on. In the software, you can submit a VAT return for each period. Since you are already continuously entering your invoices there, the VAT is calculated at the same time. Then submit VAT return to tax office with few clicks. But also do it directly online via Elster. By the way, I've already made tutorial on this. I'll link it to you in top right corner. If you lack accounting software, you can do it for free online via Elster. The frequency of doing this depends on the advanced filing period, which can be either monthly or quarterly. Therefore, if you don't have such software where you can do it with just a few clicks, you can also simply do it online. And one option is also that you don't have to do anything during the year. That means you only have to submit a VAT return once a year as part of the annual VAT annual return. How often you have to do this depends on the amount of VAT you have to pay in the previous year. If you did not make any VAT payments during the previous year, you are not required to submit interim VAT returns. In that situation, it is satisfactory to file your annual VAT return once per year. If you made payments totaling VAT within a specific range and the total amount of VAT paid in the previous year was calculated, your advance filing period will be the quarter of the year. You have to submit a VAT return for each calendar quarter. The quarter also serves as your advance notification period if you, for example, if you're starting a business or were a small business owner last year and now subject to regular taxation for the first time this year, you must also submit your VAT returns quarterly. And if you made a specific payment of VAT in the prior year, then your period for filing in advance is on a monthly basis. That means you have to submit a VAT return for each month individually. It's important to note that you always have to wait until the tax office requests it from you. That means after each year, whenever a year has passed, the tax office looks at how much VAT you paid in the entire last calendar year and sends you a letter indicating your filing period, either quarterly or monthly. Alternatively, if you were below the threshold, you may not have to submit any more VAT returns. 
the VAT return would suffice. Hence, it's vital to know that while understanding these thresholds is theoretically important, in practice, you still need to wait for the letter from the tax office, because even if you've calculated it yourself, you cannot submit this return. The tax office must have this frequency established in its system so that you can actually submit this advance return. Also important in this context is the deadline. So what is the amount of time that you actually have? You can recall that you have a total of 10 days. Your VAT return needs to be received by the tax office within 10 days following the end of each reporting period. The VAT return for Jan must be submitted by the 10th of Feb, the one for Feb by the 10th of March, and so on. For Q1, Q1 ends on March 31st, so it must be submitted by April 10th to meet the deadline. The VAT return for the second quarter, which comes to an end on June 30th, must be submitted by the 10th of July. However, the 10-day deadline does not apply to the yearly VAT return, so your annual VAT return doesn't need to be submitted by January 10th. The deadline for submission is the same as for all other tax returns, typically the 31st of July of the subsequent year. Currently, there are a few special regulations, but as a general rule, always remember that July 31st of the next year applies. If this deadline falls on a holiday or weekend, the following business day always applies. For example, if Friday is the 9th and the 10th is Saturday, then the following Monday applies, not Friday. So you don't have to stress, the deadline simply extends to the following business day. You might be thinking, wow, 10 days, that's quite tight, I can't manage that at all. In that case, you have the option to apply for a so-called extension of the deadline. This means you'll always have an extra month. So the VAT return for January wouldn't have to be submitted by February 10th, but by March 10th and so on. Few recs you must meet, I've recorded more in-depth vid on this, which I'll link to you in top right corner. If you say 10 days are too challenging that you can't manage it, be sure to check it out. VAT has a unique feature compared to other taxes. With income tax, it's like this. First, I file a tax return, then at some point I receive a tax assessment, and in that assessment it states when and how much money I have to transfer. This is consistently different with VAT. Regarding VAT, I must submit a VAT return and then transfer the amount directly. That means I don't receive a notification for my VAT return, but I have to transfer the amount directly and immediately that I have calculated. There's a crucial point you must pay attention to, which is the deadline for the advance payment, that is the money transfer, also the 10th. This means that the VAT return must not only be submitted within 10 days, but you also have to transfer the money directly and it must be in the tax office's account within 10 days. However, there's a grace period, meaning if the money must be in the tax office's account by the 13th, no late payment fees will be charged. However, it's important to note that the tax office won't remind you separately to transfer this amount. Therefore, I would strongly recommend that you always pay the full amount immediately because if you pay late, late payment penalties will automatically apply and then your tax debt will only increase. By the way, there is a relatively simple and easy trick to avoid all late payment penalties. You just provide the tax office with a direct debit mandate and then the tax office deducts these VAT amounts directly from your account. If the tax office has a direct debit mandate for your account, then all tax payments are automatically considered as paid on time. And you can also do this for income tax and trade tax, as these payments often go unnoticed in everyday life. So my advice is to always stay safe and avoid late payment penalties. Set up a direct debit mandate with the tax office for your tax payment, and they will deduct the money from your account, ensuring everything goes smoothly. I've made a video explaining the process, which I'll share with you in the top right corner. I hope this video was able to help you. If you still have questions about VAT returns, advance payments, or the German VAT system in general, feel free to leave a comment under this video and I will be happy to assist you. If you are self-employed and would like support in your daily life, such as your accounting or VAT returns, be sure to check out our offer. I'll link you to all info about our offer here, or you can first check out other videos on this channel, like this one or this one.